couple of weeks, maybe a month ago, I uploaded a video covering the process of how to route the OnePlus 8 Pro. Then many of you commented on that video saying, can you please make a video on how to route X device. And the thing is, unfortunately, there actually isn't one universal method for rooting every device on the market. But that said, there is kind of a generic way for most devices. And I use the word most pretty lightly here, but I thought, why not showcase this method in a video as well? So that's what we're going to do today. Now, before we walk through this method, another comment I saw a lot of on that OnePlus 8 video was, can you show me how to root a phone without a PC? And believe me when I say rooting a phone without a PC is one of two things. It's either really hard and not worth the effort, or it's a lie. There are these apps that claim that they can root your phone without a PC, but put simply, they don't work. So here's what I'll say. If you don't have a PC, then it's probably not worth going through the process of rooting your phone, particularly if something goes wrong, then you won't be able to restore your phone back to normal and you'll be left with a glorified paperweight. So with that said, let's talk about how to root most phones. Okay, first things first, make sure that you completely back up your phone before going through with this process. And I always recommend double checking the various methods of rooting your device of choice over on XDA or something similar. This next step is gonna sound very familiar if you've already watched my OnePlus 8 Pro rooting guide video, and that's because it is pretty much exactly the same. So we need to download some files that are gonna enable our device to interact with our computer. And I've left a link down below to where you can download these files. As I mentioned in the previous video, there are specific files for Mac, PC, and so forth. So make sure you grab the ones that are suited to your computer of choice. But once you've downloaded them, you'll get a zip file. So we're gonna open that downloaded zip file and extract it. And within that, we should see a folder called Platform Tools. Now I'm gonna drag and drop this over to my desktop. And I suggest that you do the same so that following this tutorial doesn't become a complete mess. Now, if you haven't already, this next step is gonna cover unlocking the bootloader of our phones, which we need to do in order to actually root our phones. This can be a slightly different process on every single device. Rarely does one method work on every single phone. So what I recommend doing is Googling something like how to unlock the insert devices bootloader. There will no doubt be several articles or forum posts covering how to do this for your device. And keep in mind, your phone will be completely wiped at this point in time. But for the most part, the method will look something like the following. You'll need to first enable developer options on your phone. And doing this is actually pretty universal across all phones. So to do this, we need to open our phone's settings, navigate down to the about phone menu, and then tap where it says build number seven times until your passcode shows up. Once you've inputted your passcode, then we need to head back into the main settings menu and then come into the system page, though this menu might be labeled differently depending on the phone that you're using. But then we need to navigate to a new section that should now show up called developer options. Within this page, we need to find a setting called OEM unlocking and make sure it is switched to on. Then we'll come down to the debugging section and enable USB debugging. Now we need to plug our device into our computer and you'll probably get an authorization pop-up that asks to allow USB debugging, which you wanna allow. Okay, now back to our computers and we wanna launch into our command prompt application. So this is the terminal on a Mac or the command prompt on a Windows device. But once we've opened the application, we then wanna type the following, CD space desktop and then enter and then CD platform dash tools and then enter. And this will direct our terminal to that platform tools folder that we moved to our desktop earlier. From there, type in dot slash ADB space devices on a Mac or you can just type in ADB devices if you're on a Windows device and then hit enter and you should see a random number here that indicates that your device is correctly set up. Or it could also show as blank if you haven't yet enabled USB debugging or you haven't authorized it on your phone yet or it could be that your cable isn't properly plugged in or it's a faulty cable. So check all of those things if this number doesn't show up for you. But once this number shows up and we've verified that our device is plugged in, we're now gonna type in dot slash ADB or just ADB again, if you're on a Windows machine, then space, then reboot space bootloader, and then hit enter to launch our phone into fast boot mode. Then we need to type in a command that will actually unlock the bootloader of our phone. And this is gonna be relative to the device that you're using. So for example, on a Pixel 4 device, we type in fast boot flashing unlock, or on a OnePlus device, we type in fastboot OEM unlock. So again, just verify the correct command for your device by doing a quick Google search. Anyway, once you enter this command, you should see a confirmation message on your device, and you can then use the volume keys to select the unlock the bootloader option, then hit the power key 
to confirm. But your bootloader will then unlock and then you can reboot your phone. And it's at this point that your phone will be completely wiped and restored to its factory state, except for the fact that the bootloader is now unlocked. Okay, so you can now take the time to reset up your phone because your phone won't be wiped again from this point forward. But whilst you're doing so, make sure you head back into the settings menu and re-enable the developer options and USB debugging as well because those settings will have been reset in the wiping process. But whilst your phone is being restored, we can now head back to our PCs to locate the factory image file for our device of choice. And this is probably one of the main reasons why rooting a Google Pixel device is so easy because Google uploads these files themselves onto their own website every single time an update is released. So you find this file, whether it be directly from the manufacturer or from a friendly user over on the XDA forums, or perhaps from a website such as needrom.com. But once you've found it, download it, and this will be a pretty large file. But once it's downloaded, we then need to unzip it. Now within that unzipped folder, you should see a bunch of files and we're looking for another zip file here. And for the Pixel 4, you can see it's called image-coral-blah-blah-blah.zip. So we're gonna unzip that. And then in this folder, you'll see some more files, but the one we're looking for is called boot.img. So we wanna take this boot image file and transfer it over to our device of choice. I'm just gonna place it in the downloads folder using Android file transfer. Now that we've done that, we wanna head back to our phones and download and install the Magisk Manager application, which of course I'll leave a link to below. Then launch the app and you should see a button here that says install. We're gonna tap on that, then tap install again, and then tap the select and patch a file option. From here, we wanna find that boot image file we just transferred to the downloads folder and select it. Magisk Manager will then patch that boot image file and store it into the downloads folder on your phone as well. So then we wanna jump back to our computers and locate that file. So if you're on a Mac, you do it via the Android file transfer application, or you can just use the file explorer on a Windows device, but you're gonna find that file. It's gonna be called magisk underscore patched dot IMG. And we're gonna drag and drop that file from our phone to the platform tools folder on our desktop. Okay, nearly there. So with our device still plugged in, we wanna jump back to our command prompt application and launch our phone back into fastboot mode by typing dot slash ADB on a Mac or just ADB if you're on a Windows device, then space, then reboot, space, bootloader, then hit enter. Once our phone is back into fastboot mode, we can then type in the following, fastboot space flash space boot space and then magisk underscore patched dot IMG, or instead of typing out magisk underscore patched, you can also just drag and drop the image file directly from your platform tools folder. But once you've fully typed that command, you can then hit enter. The image file will then be patched over. And once it's done, you can then reboot your phone and your phone will now be rooted. Double check that all is well in the magisk manager application. You should have all greens now indicating that root has been installed. And that is it. Now, depending on the device you own, you may be able to still install OTA updates directly on your phone whilst maintaining root without having to use a PC, thanks to the Magisk Manage application. I'll leave an article down below that explains how to do this. But even though my Pixel 4 should technically be able to do this, I think I've only ever had it work like twice. Every other time I've had to manually flash the OTA update and then repeat the aforementioned patched boot image method to re-enable root access. And even though it might seem fairly arduous to have to do this every month. To be honest, you get pretty quick at it and the only thing that really takes time is downloading the factory image files themselves. Now, if you're not sure what to do with your newly rooted device from here, I've made a video that walks through 10 root only features that is probably a pretty good place to start. I'll leave a link up here and down there. But aside from that, if you found this video helpful, then a subscribe would be amazing. But that's it. Thank you all very much for watching and I will catch you later.